Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller suspense films from 2018, titled Rust Creek. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens with a college student named Sawyer Scott running on a track field. Moments later, she stops when she receives a voicemail from a company where she had applied to. It turns out she has been chosen for an interview, and must appear in Washington DC, the day after tomorrow. This makes her extremely happy since she has been looking forward to this opportunity for a long time. Afterward, Sawyer returns to the college, and makes the necessary preparations for the trip. The next day, she leaves for Washington DC, and relies on her phone's GPS to navigate in the right direction. Sawyer hears on the radio that the traffic is too heavy on the main highway due to the holiday season. As a result, she decides to take a rural route, and soon arrives in an unfamiliar location. At one point, Sawyer reaches a dead end near a jungle, where the road is closed. Her GPS suggests making a U-turn, but she decides to keep going to find an alternative route. After a while of driving, she eventually comes to a T-junction, and pulls over to check the map. There, we see two men digging with shovels, they are startled by her car and worry that she has seen them. Sawyer then moves away from there as she becomes frustrated with her GPS, and pulls out a paper map to find another route. Soon after, she stops by the roadside, and begins studying the map. After a while, a truck suddenly pulls up in front of her, and the two men from earlier get out. They introduce themselves as brothers named Hollister, and Buck, and ask if she requires any help. When she explains that she's lost, Hollister takes her map, and shows her how to get back on the highway. Next, Sawyer proceeds to return to her car, but Hollister unexpectedly invites her for dinner at his house. She refuses, but he insists that it'll be dark soon and she will be unable to reach the highway in time. And then suddenly, Come on, it's on. Buck attempts to restrain her, but she pulls a knife from his pocket and stabs him. He immediately takes it back, and stabs her in the thighs, but she manages to escape his grasp, and flees into the woods. Following this, the brothers start following her, but Sawyer hides in a burrow, and uses her sweater to cover her wound. She then throws a rock to the other side to mislead the men, and thankfully, it works. As it begins to get dark, the brothers call off their search, and leave the woods. Meanwhile, after a long walk, a terrified Sawyer lies down in the burrow, and soon falls asleep. The next morning, we are taken to the local police station, where a sheriff named Nick receives an urgent call and transfers it to his boss, Doyle. Doyle receives a complaint about an abandoned car on the side of the road, and is asked to check on the owner. The sheriff agrees, and heads to the location, where he discovers Sawyer's car. He also notices a bloodstain on the ground, and realizes something has gone wrong here. Shortly after, Doyle arrives at the brother's house, and inquires about the abandoned vehicle on the road. Hollister casually claims that he has no knowledge of it. Doyle also notices that both Buck and Hollister are injured, but they claim it was just a hunting accident. Since the sheriff has no evidence to implicate them, he simply drives away from there. Elsewhere, Sawyer awakens, and tries to move forward, but her legs are still injured, and she is unable to walk properly. She then finds shelter by a cliff, and attempts to tend to her wounds. Despite her dire situation, Sawyer remains hopeful, believing that since her car is on the roadside, someone will eventually see it. On the other hand, we see the two men taking the car away from the roadside. Back to Sawyer, as she's taking a break. Her car plunges down the slope, and she hears the brothers cheering. Sawyer overhears Hollister saying that they need to find her quickly, or they will be in trouble. Buck then assures his brother that she is too injured to escape, and will probably die soon. After the men leave, Sawyer goes to her wrecked car, and retrieves her broken phone. It is still functional and she notices several missed calls from her mother. She attempts to call back, but there is no signal. Meanwhile, the brothers are searching for her in the surrounding area. Hollister notices some bloody leaves on the ground, and suspects she might be nearby. Sawyer then starts wandering all over the forest, but she still can't get a signal. 
and to make matters worse, her phone unexpectedly dies due to low battery. As it begins to get dark, the poor girl attempts to move forward, but soon becomes disoriented, and falls to the ground. In her dazed state, she notices a man approaching her. She asks him who he is, but before she can hears him, she loses consciousness. The next morning, Sawyer wakes up in bed inside a trailer, and is shocked to see that her injuries have been treated and bandaged by someone. Sawyer then wanders around and tries to leave, but all the doors are locked. She eventually comes across a kitchen, which looks like some kind of laboratory. At this moment, a man named Lowell approaches her, and it turns out he was the one who brought her here. Sawyer threatens him not to approach any closer as he tries to calm her down. But she notices a bottle of lye on the counter and quickly throws it at his face, right before she feels dazed again, and falls unconscious. The scene then cuts to the police station, where Nick is discussing the abandoned car with Doyle. Nick insists that they conduct a thorough investigation because he finds the entire situation odd. However, Doyle seems annoyed by his commitment to the case, and orders him not to overthink it. Nick is suspicious of Buck and Hollister, and believes they are involved, but Doyle states that the brothers are mischievous, but not criminals. In the next scene, Sawyer regains consciousness in the trailer when Lowell brings her a sandwich and a drink. But this time, she finds her hands tied. Sawyer asserts that she needs to go to the hospital and call the police, but he ignores her. Shortly after, she notices him packing meth in the kitchen and takes a bite of the sandwich. Sawyer then introduces herself and explains what happened to her. She tells him that her parents are probably worried about her, and asks him to take her to the police. Just then, a vehicle approaches the trailer, and Sawyer begins to scream for help. But Lowell quickly covers her mouth and warns her that if she shouts, they'll kill her. He then tells her to remain silent, and walks outside, where he is met by Hollister and Buck. It turns out that Lowell is their cousin, and cooks meth for them. They ask him about the girl who went missing around here, but Lowell says he hasn't seen anyone. While they are talking, Sawyer notices a pot of lye, and attempts to use the chemical to break her ropes. Meanwhile, Buck and Hollister find it suspicious that Lowell suddenly didn't invite them inside, or even offer them beer this time. They suspect he might be hiding something, so they venture inside to check. Fortunately, they don't find anyone, and it turns out that Sawyer has already broken free and run away. This makes the brothers satisfied, and they finally drive away from there. Later, we see a clueless Sawyer walking through the woods. But Lowell soon catches her, and forcibly brings her back to the trailer. Elsewhere, at the police station, Nick and Doyle are visited by their superior, State Police Commander Slattery. He is very disappointed with Doyle's work, and requests an update on the abandoned car case. Deputy Nick reveals that the car belongs to a couple who gave it to their daughter, named Sawyer. She has been missing for several days, and was last seen on her campus. Upon hearing this, Slattery directs the sheriffs to make the case a top priority, and urges them to find the girl as soon as possible. Back in the trailer, Lowell tells Sawyer that what she did with the rope was clever. She asks him to let her go, promising not to reveal anything about his work. However, Lowell explains that they are five miles off the main road, and 20 from the nearest town. He doesn't have a car, and if she tries to leave on foot, she will likely run into either Buck or Hollister. Sawyer is still skeptical, so Lowell finally cuts her ropes. He mentions that the brothers are heading to Charleston this weekend, so he will borrow their truck and drop her off somewhere safe. Until then, she is free to leave at any time, and he won't stop her. Elsewhere, the brothers are confronted by Doyle, who is angry with them. He demands they tell the truth about the girl since his superior is pressuring him. At this point, it is revealed that they all work together, and the brothers supplied drugs for Doyle's operation. Hollister then admits that he thought the girl saw them burying a dead body, which is why they attacked her. It turns out on that day, they were burying someone per Doyle's orders. The brothers assure the sheriff that the girl is most likely dead, and that they will search for her tomorrow. The scene then shifts to the next morning, when we see Lowell cooking meth. Sawyer shows interest in his work, so he proceeds to give her a demonstration. He also shows her a coffee mug containing anhydrous ammonia, which he used to cook meth. It is far more dangerous than lye, and can burn someone's skin in seconds. Sawyer assists with his work and, during this time, she steals a garden fork for safety. Lowell then informs her that the brothers are arriving soon, 
and asks her to hide. As she leaves, he notices that one of the garden forks is missing, and realizes she still doesn't trust him. Shortly after, the brothers arrive at the trailer with some raw materials, and bring them inside. They quickly leaves as the place is full of dense gas. Elsewhere, Nick who's still investigating Sawyer's case is advised to spend Thanksgiving with his family. After much convincing, he finally agrees to leave and heads outside. But moments later, he recalls something and returns to his office to retrieve it. But then, he overhears Doyle ordering Hollister to find and make sure the girl is dead. This leaves Nick horrified, and he can't believe that his boss was the real culprit all along. Doyle asks for a chance to explain, but a terrified Nick points a gun at him and proceeds to leave. Doyle pleads that it doesn't have to end like this since they are partners, and before Nick can get into his car. Doyle ends up shooting him dead. In the evening, the corrupt sheriff hands the dead body over to Hollister and Buck, asking them to get rid of it. He also asks if they have any belongings of the missing girl, so Hollister gives him Sawyer's wallet, which he had discovered in her car. The next day, an enraged Slattery visits Doyle, as the girl has still not been found, and Nick has also been missing since last night. But Doyle suggests that his partner is fine, and may have gone out for a drink with friends. Slattery then declares that his team will take over the search for Sawyer, and her parents are also coming here. Upon hearing this, Doyle becomes worried, and he deliberately opens Nick's locker in front of his superior, where he pulls out Sawyer's wallet from there, and pretends to be shocked. Slattery is also taken aback, and informs his team that Nick may be involved in the missing girl case, and asks them to look for him. In the afternoon, Doyle arrives at Lowell's trailer to check on the meth production. However, Lowell points a shotgun at him, and stops him from entering. An enraged Doyle reminds him that he is the chief, and Lowell is just an Indian. But the latter calmly reveals that Doyle is standing next to a barrel of ether, and he only needs to shoot once to cause an explosion. Hearing this, the sheriff decides not to disrupt the production and drives away from there. Lowell then enters the trailer, and informs Sawyer that it was just his boss. While driving away, Doyle notices the brothers, and comments on how rudely their cousin was acting. He also orders them to conduct the drug deal properly, and prove that they can compete with a Mexican cartel. Shortly after, the brothers arrive at the trailer to collect a batch of meth. Lowell hands them the product, but Hollister then notices two distinct sets of footprints on the stairs. This makes him suspicious, but he doesn't say anything and drives off. Following this, Lowell enters the trailer, and informs Sawyer that they will stay until dusk, after which he will take her to the state police. He also reveals that he intends to leave this place and start over in life. Upon hearing his words, Sawyer returns the garden fork she had taken, but Lowell tells her to keep it as a memento. Suddenly, while they're talking, the brothers barge in and are shocked to see the girl. Hollister accuses his cousin of betrayal, and demands that Sawyer come with him. However, Lowell tries to calm him down, urging him to sit and talk first. He also asks Sawyer to prepare coffee for everyone. Lowell then tells the brothers that he's been keeping Sawyer as a hostage, and making her do all sorts of work. While they're talking, Sawyer discreetly pours the anhydrous ammonia solution from the coffee mug, and heats it in the microwave. To maintain the act, Lowell claims he's trained Sawyer well, and then orders her to sit on his lap. Seeing this, Hollister is amused, but Buck notices something is wrong in the microwave. A massive explosion occurs, killing Buck instantly, while Sawyer and Lowell manage to escape the trailer, but the latter is badly injured. Sawyer urges him to come with her, but he insists he can't make it, and gives her directions to the nearest road. As she runs away, a badly burned Hollister emerges from the wreckage, and tries to shoot her, but Lowell intervenes and grabs him from behind. The cousins engage in a brutal fight. However, just when Lowell is about to finish off Hollister, Doyle arrives out of nowhere and shoots him. Hollister feels a sense of relief, but it's short-lived, as the sheriff coldly shoots him as well. In the next scene, Sawyer finally emerges from the forest after running for a while, and is relieved to see a police car. Unfortunately, it turns out that she is picked up by Doyle again, whom she doesn't recognize. She tells him everything, how she was attacked by two men on the road, and how Lowell saved her and kept her hidden. 
She also states that all three men worked for someone else, but she never saw his face. Sawyer then asks Doyle if he's not going to call for backup or return to help Lowell. So, he tells her not to worry, asserting that in this situation, he is the chief, and she is an Indian. Upon hearing this, Sawyer is shocked, as this is the exact phrase she had overheard Lowell's boss say outside the trailer. Shortly after, Doyle abruptly stops the car, and tells Sawyer that they will walk the rest of the way. The poor girl has no choice, but to comply with him. Doyle then leads her to a river, where Sawyer begs him not to do this. However, the corrupt sheriff immediately grabs her hair, and proceeds to drown her. Our heroine fights with all of her might, but the man easily overpowers her. As a last resort, Sawyer uses the garden fork she had hidden earlier and attacks him. She stabs him in the feet, face, and chest, until he eventually dies, and is carried away by the flow of the river. In the final scene, Sawyer is exhaustedly making her way back to the road, and sets off in the direction Lowell had instructed her. As usual, the cops show up late to the party and begins following her. But the poor girl is too traumatized to react, or even cry for help. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.